Hey guys, welcome to Bite Me, a truthful groomer podcast, the only podcast where we dismantle the dogma that the patriarchy taught us and confront uncomfortable truths for a better tomorrow. I'm Brooke. How's everybody doing mentally? We're doing okay? We're doing good? Well, mental health chair, I'll be honest, like initially, I think that recent events that happened at the Capitol, like I, I think at first I found them humorous and then I was like, uh, this is not, this not funny. <laughs> And now we're all experiencing a little bit of residual PTSD. I don't want to get too political with it. I'm trying to get away from that stuff or get away from it being so mainstream in my channel. But, uh, you know, you you can't help but feel a little affected by it. You wake up in the morning, you can't hardly believe what's going on. And it's been that way for some time, I know. But something about that just hits differently, doesn't it? <laughs> People go in there just overthrowing the government like it ain't no big deal. And then the United Nations threatening to get involved. Ugh. You know, uh, it kind of brings me to my point this episode. Like, who's really running the show here? Who's really in charge of who? And uh, money. I mean, it comes down to it. It's our capitalist lords. We need to fire our leaders and hate the system that is capitalism. Because it's capitalism and greed that causes that. It's a lot of things. It's a lack of education in the public education system. It's um, racism. And it is greed and power. Just obsession and consumption of greed and power. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Because I know a lot of us are broke right now. <laughs> and um, while it's not okay to be a capitalist, it is totally okay to want to be able to support yourself tests have proven they've done studies where it shows that to a point more money won't buy you happiness but to a point it does bring you a certain level of you know comfort for survival survival and that can be shown in tests that other countries have taken where america has the lowest uh happiness compared to other sovereign free countries you know it it is attached to the fact that we're working our asses off to just be middle class, if that, and that none of us are going to retire with a pension. We've all got a shitload of debt. The current state of the economy is lower than it was during the Great Depression. The rich got richer, the poor got poorer, and our government was nowhere to be found. And they were at the center of it. While lines rounded the food banks, athletes, artists, and franchise owner cashed in big. Even if you didn't lose your job personally, you may have been affected by your client's inability to hire you due to their unemployment. It's a vicious cycle that trickles down until there is, in fact, no more blood to squeeze from said turnip. I want you all to think about that for a minute, because even if you haven't been affected by the economic state that came from what was the pandemic, you are affected. Like, you can't tell me that you have not been affected in some way financially by what's going on here. The people who aren't affected are those who are a part of like the top 1%. And it is the wealthy 1%. 1% of the world owns 99% of the world's wealth. It's like Jeff Bezos, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Bill Gates even. Although I'll give him this. He did say that need to help the American people during the pandemic. The rest of them were just like, fuck off. You know, it came to be that way uh, because of the boomer generation they believed in capitalism and that they should have a right to that and that that is the American dream. And now what we are seeing, Gen X and millennials, is the after effects of late stage capitalism. You know, you want to go, you want to work hard, you want to have, it's, it's like, when is enough enough? You know, when is enough money going to be enough? And that's apparently never enough for these people. You want to be comfortable, you want to have a nice life, you want to make a good living, you want to leave something for your children. But at what point do you really need an island? I don't know. I don't know, Zuckerberg. I don't know that we need to buy the island of Hawaii. That seems a little extreme. So the boomers, in that aspect, trying to achieve that American dream that they believed was capitalism, they created this. And if you want a little more context on that, the book A Generation of Sociopaths by Bruce Cannon Givney outlines it best. Boomers really did promote the effects of capitalism, and we were falling prey to the late stages of such, these people who don't know how to share, Bezos, J Zuckerberg, anyone you can on Shark Tank, it's not enough to say that there should be a fair distribution of wealth amongst all, but there should be a limit to what one can solely own. Should one have millions while millions go hungry? These are people 
who were either born into wealth, got lucky, or played the monopoly just to their advantage. With your money. With our money. Jeff Bezos got like some trillion dollars richer, richer during the pandemic while we all suffered. How do we take some of that power back? You know, it's, it's going to be a while before we see what effects, if any, the, the Biden-Harris administration will bring to us economically. I know Bernie's going to have a role in that. It would be nice if we could adopt some of these other quote-unquote socialist countries' methods for handling of the pandemic where, you know, human lives and health and happiness were prioritized over money. Um, we'll see if that does or doesn't happen. In the meantime, I would suggest to you all to play a little bit better game. And what I mean by that is that you're going to have to figure out a way to support yourself in in this economic structure. I will tell you me personally, maybe it's easier for me to say this than someone else. I'm not a rich woman. I'm not a poor woman. I've had money and I've not had it, but I am well-versed in finances. I've invested in stock. I own a home. Uh, I do have some debt right now because of the pandemic, but I'm also a small business owner. So that's, that's going to happen anytime you own a small business. But I want to tell you that you, I'm not trying to make you rich and I'm not trying to sell anything to you. I'm just here to tell you today in this episode that you can make it so there's other avenues that you can utilize where you don't have to constantly work your ass off. I do work my ass off. It's personal preference. There's some things you do that you can do to kind of gateway into that monopoly. You can follow the money badger on TikTok. He will tell you how to sell books on Amazon. You can invest in stock. There's penny stock. Right now, Stitch Fix is pretty cheap per share. It's like $67 per share. That is the future. You need to find out what stocks are penny stocks right now that are really low in value now that are going to be the future. That's how Tesla, you know, Tesla's booming right now. Not a lot of people knew what Tesla was or cared to look into it to invest in it, you know, but now it's booming. And I know. Elon Musk is a ripe hot piece of shit. But I'm just saying, if you can invest in stock, you can build interest there and pay off your credit cards with it. And yeah, when you take anytime you take out stock, there's a penalty to pay. But during the pandemic, they made it so you can take out a certain amount without penalty. You can also save up to two thousand dollars in investing in stock and buy a house with that. That's another thing you can do. You can buy a house. Why is anybody renting anymore? Don't do that. Buy a house and then you become the renter you know, play a better game. You don't want to be a part of the capitalism. You don't want to be a cog in the machine. But let's face it, if you're buying gas or groceries, you're already a part of the rat race, whether you want to be or not. At this time period, we don't have a choice but participate if we wish to survive. Invest in yourself. Who's getting rich at your day job? Do you have a boss? Are you getting rich? No, your shitty boss is getting rich. Be your own boss. The internet's a gold mine. Become a freelancer on Fiverr. That's where I get all of my podcast stuff. I mean, I do the podcast, but I do pay somebody a meager fee to edit them. You can start your own craft store and sell things on Etsy or a dog grooming business like I did. You can't get upset about results you didn't create. And that's a quote from Karen Lowenthal. And she has a podcast called Unfuck Your Brain. If you like me, you're going to love her. I encourage you to go listen to her immediately. But what I'm saying to you is, if you're going to be poor, you may as well not work your ass off for someone else until you die. If you're going to be poor, be poor for you. Given the nation's current economic state, I seriously doubt that you'll be any more poor than anyone else. But do create those results. There's a new era coming. And if now isn't the time to be brave, when is? I believe in you. For more information on how the baby boomers destroyed America, you can check out the previously referenced book, A Generation of Sociopaths by Bruce Cannon Gibney on audiobooks. And also be sure to follow uh, Carol Lowenthal's Unfuck Your Brain podcast for more tips on how to draw your internal inspiration for thought work. And uh, also Money Badger is on TikTok, a friend of mine. Uh, he can walk you through how to get gated and ungated on Amazon selling books. Um, these are all just tips, but I just want you guys to remember that you ain't stuck, okay? I, I'm telling you right now, if I can do it, literally any asshole can do it. We're going to be okay, but I encourage you to get creative with how you make your money and stop working for the wealthy 1%. We'll see you next time.